that I really love about this game is um, you can actually progress through the scenarios. And that was something that was taken out in the sequel, which I didn't really, really like. But in this game, in the original, um, you can actually unlock scenarios as you keep the other ones, which is really cool. Uh, there are two expansion packs, of course, two qualities and two landscapes. And in total, I... whoops. In total, I dare say there is about... Easily 100 scenarios. I might be off on the number by a few here and there, but there is certainly a ton of content. And the best part is you can get it on GOG.com or Steam.com for very cheap prices. It is a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with Forest of the Tears. Uh, that is the first scenario. It's one of the easiest ones, um, has one of the easiest. Uh, Requirements and well, let's just jump right in, okay? Forest Frontiers. All right. Deep in the forest, build a thriving theme park in a large cleared area. Now, um, if we zoom out and the controls are all up here, if we zoom out right here, you can see that it's not a very large park. So, um, there's not a lot of space to build. But fortunately, that's not going to be a problem for us right now. Because, as you can see, our objective is to only have, you know, 250 guests in, uh, in the span of one year. And that is honestly not hard at all. And you can definitely tell that, th that this is like a starter tutorial thing. Now, there is an actual tutorial, which I'm not going to do because it is boring as heck. But, yeah, Forest Frontiers, uh, first scenario, easiest one. Let's uh, jump right in. So the first thing I want to do while the game is still paused is go ahead and um, uh, check out what our research tab looks like. So let's go ahead and click research. Now you, you always want to check out what rides you have and what rides and shops you can build because as you can see we don't have what I consider to be the best stall you could ever have which is the information kiosk. And the information kiosk, um, you can sell umbrellas, and you can sell park maps. And it's honestly kind of a requirement to beat the game in any scenario. Because once it starts raining, then guests don't really go on anything unless, you know, they bought umbrellas. And their happiness will drop, and, you know, that's just not fun. Um, so we do need the information kiosk. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is keep this in normal funding but I'm just going to solely focus on shops and stalls. That way we can get the information kiosk out first, and then after that we can go ahead and start doing more fun things. In the meantime though, I do want to build a few little rides to get started. First of all, we do need a merry-go-round. It's a classic, you got to have a merry-go-round. So let's go ahead and pop one in. Let's delete this tree. Now, deleting trees do cost money, so you kind of have to be careful about that. Let's go ahead and put one in there. Um, entrance right about here, exit here. Now, let's go ahead and test. But before we test, you can see we have our little operations tab right here. Um, we do want to jack that down a little, because if we put it at 9 like it was before, then the ride time gets too long, and people start waiting in line far too long. And then they start and then they uh, start complaining, which you don't really want. So I'm going to go ahead and jack this down to five. Turn off maximum waiting time, or rather, uh, move down the maximum waiting time to about 30 seconds. Now that's the same deal. We want to keep the wait time at a minimum. And inspection every 10 minutes. That way, you you increase uh, reliability. Right here, reliability. Right now, it's at 100, but as it as it keeps operating, that figure is going to drop, 
and drop, and it's going to break down more, which is going to be more costly to you, the operator. So now that's over with. Let's go ahead and give it a test run. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and build a couple paths. Now we have to build queue lines instead of normal lines because guests only queue on these specially designated tiles. There you go, that should be enough. Perfect. And, aha, stats. Excitement rating, 1.17. Now, with these kind of flat rides, the ratings are kind of fixed. You can't really do much to influence them. But as we can see later on with theme parks like roller, with uh, rides like roller coasters and more exciting stuff, you can have quite a bit of leeway in how these statistics go. All right, so that's all well and done. Let's build one more because I really want to build one more. Uh, we have a gentle ride, as you can see right here. Now I kind of want to build a thrill ride, just you know, so people can have like scary things to ride, you know, instead of just like this measly uh, merry-go-round right here. Let's go ahead and build that in the corner. Entrance and exit. Now something that I've gotten into the habit of doing as I've been playing these games is uh, you want to um, plan in advance. So you don't want to like box yourself in for later. Because then that's just a pain later on in the game when you want to actually do stuff in the back of the park. Okay, let's go ahead and, and adjust our settings. Turn this down every 10 minutes. Go to test. And there you have it. 207. So not bad, not bad. Thrill rides usually do get a higher excitement rating than gentle rides. But, you know, they're more intense as well. And you have different peeps that like different things. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, we have two rides. It's time to open the park. Admission is free, which is good. Because we want to charge for rides. Now, the line I like to go with when I charge for rides is it has to be about the excitement level. So $2 here. And let's open this up, open that up, for the merry-go-round, let's put it at 110, alright, hey look, we have our first guest, and he's riding the carousel, hmm, Our objectives. Best in park four. We need 250 by October. It's March, so we still have a lot of time. Now uh, we have two rides, but we also need staff members, since you know rides break down and uh, guests poop, right? Let's hire a mechanic and let's hire a handyman. But with the handyman, I want to turn this off. Mow grass. That does absolutely nothing, it's a waste of their time, so go ahead and turn it off. You don't want them doing that. Close out of all these. And we do have other things we can build, like food and drinks and restrooms, but we don't have to worry about those until the guest stats match up. So we don't have to worry about that for at least a month. In-game month, that is. Let's go ahead and build a roller coaster. I like roller coasters, and you know, it's Roller Coaster Tycoon, right? Not build roller coasters. Hmm, you know what? Let's be a little creative. Raise that two tiles. And have this roller coaster go right across the path. That looks cool, right? Yeah. I think so too. that. And that should be it. I really do like the uh, building system we have for roller coasters, roller coasters in this game a lot. It's kind of simple. It's uh, really easy to understand. 
um, that does come at like the cost of, you know, um, customization. But it's really easy, and that's all that matters for this kind of game. Easy to learn, easy to use. So, we do have some clearance issues right here. So that means I did something wrong. start bringing it back towards the station. Raining, which isn't good because guests will not go on a lot of stuff in the rain. So that's why we really need the information to be awesome. Let's see how it's coming along. So, 17th April, it's gonna be a while. I guess we're just gonna have to bear it until then, I guess. One good thing about rain though is that uh, when it does rain, guests will flock to the rides that um, have like some sort of cover over it, like this merry go round. So you can see like a lot more guests are coming towards it right now, which is good. But then no one's riding the VS swing ship because it doesn't have cover, which is bad. So there is some give and take here. So um, these stats came out, and you can see that the roller coaster has a really high slide rating compared to say uh, the Viking, which only has like two, right? So roller coasters are the best value for your money. I mean, I guess it is all gold. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, charge properly and open it up. Even though no one's gonna ride it right now because it's raining. And now we sit and wait. Yep, so information kiosk is coming along, it should be here in a few seconds. Because if I remember correctly, one day in Roller Coaster Tycoon is about 12 seconds. So it should be coming in, say, 2 or 3 minutes, which is good for us. So now that the rain has stopped, you can see that um, guests are actually starting to go on the roller coaster. Which is great because it means money for us, it means happiness for the guests. Win win either way. So that's awesome. So now that um, the information chaos is almost done, we do want to go back, um, turn off shop installs, and then focus research on the actual rides that we have to do. 
goes. So yeah, it's uh, pretty short, it's pretty sweet, but you know, gets the job done at this early stage, which is get the most amount of guests on the rise and out of the pass. Yeah, it's getting it's getting through that time when uh, they're gonna get a little hungry. So we do want to put in some food, raise the price a little bit, because this is a theme park, so you do want to charge extravagantly for food, right? Some drinks. Now, um, this evil thing that I really like to do, because no one plays RCT without at least a degree of evilness, is I charge for restrooms. Yeah, I, I charge for restrooms. Just 10 cents. But, you know, it's enough for a little extra cash, which you need, right? And, you know, it's 10 cents. It's not really nickel and dime. It's just 10 cents. The information kiosk is finally here, so let's get rid of that. bunch of gentle rides. We do need a haunted house because that is another one of those covered rides. And it is just about to rain so we're climbing. Now you can actually have a few different views here. And Right, you can see the scenery, and that does help out a lot when the park is really crowded and a lot of things going on. And this way, oops, this way, you can get a bit of a better view of what you want to do. Lamps are useless in this game because it's always daytime. So I never hit down lamps. I, I just do uh, benches and cash cans. That's really all you need. So yeah, like as you can see, like everyone's just walking to the carousel of the haunted house, and no one's going on the roller coaster or the lightning because they don't have colors. So that's the annoying thing. I mean, it's definitely not like that in life, because I know I love roller coasters in the It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. Now, something else you can do is uh, name your rides. And that's honestly depending on how old you are. It's either like amazing or it can be really really annoying because uh i can name this uh your mom and you can look at what and you can look at what the peeps are thinking and it says your mom is great well not anymore i don't know what your mom is <laughs> so that's just a little bit of a childish juvenile humor <laughs> the scrambler. So this is the point where you kind of want to uh, diversify a little. And I can't go there because in appearance. Stupid probably should have done that before. Run. And at 
Meantime, okay. Now, um, see what I just did? Um, now there are like literally no supports. There's nothing holding this trap up, which definitely doesn't happen in real life. But this is a game. It's Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's got a roll with it. Got our stats. We adjust our prices accordingly. And open it up. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I just, just like to break from building, just uh, look at the trains go by. It's a really relaxing game, I love it a lot. One of my favorite games. And the funny thing is, I'm actually running this on our uh, company PC, which is this beast of a machine, is four thousand dollars. It's like a spaceship, and I'm playing a game from a uh, 1999 on. So all those dollars to a very good use. Once again, are useless because no one pays attention to them. And just hold it right here. And yeah, so see, if you look at our uh, guests, we're already at the number we need. And we're only on May, so you can really tell that this is like just a simple training tutorial kind of scenario and it's not really meant to challenge you it's just you know kind of that, that you use to have the game work which is all fine you know don't get me wrong i love forest frontiers it's really nostalgic i used to play it a lot mm. see with the wooden roller coaster the thing that i'm hesitant about holding it now is they are um relatively expensive and with the amount of cash we have right now i don't think we can build one that i like personally so i am going to hold off on that for just a little and see what else we can do. not much it's like we do have a car ride but i don't really want to build that because it is honestly one of the worst returns on investment we can have Especially with the low cyber that it gets. So I don't want to build that quite yet. Uh, the monorail is a transport ride. So that is more suited for like bigger parks, you know? But then this is all I got to work with, so there's really no point in doing that. Mm. You know what? Let's just go ahead and build the wood because we can just finish it later on, just help and go, help and go. And on the other hand, I do like... Now, um, I trust I don't need to explain the basics of poster building. Basically, you need a lift hill, and the lift hill takes you up to the highest point. And then every hill after that needs to be shorter, basically. So it's not a hard concept. I hope not, at least.
Now, one thing we do want to keep in mind while we're building is make sure that the rest of the park is holding up pretty well. See, right now, I only have one handicap. And as you can see, like, there are a lot of guests just kind of, like, throwing up and, you know, not being very hygienic and stuff like that. So, I think this is about the right time to go ahead and hire one more. And something else you can do with Candyman to increase their uh, productivity is you can actually assign control areas to them. So this little button right here, click on that, and just go like that. And that way, your Handyman will not leave that area. So that's definitely a good help. Okay, let's go back to this building. Put a photo section on the ride. So what that does is, well, we can't hold it right now because we have this poster right above us. But what you can do is put it in an area, and guests will actually buy those photos, which is pretty cool. And it also drives up profits for your party. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put that in anywhere. Yeah. yeah, so see, we're out of cash, which sucks. But, I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far, which is good. And, um, one, one other thing. That I really like is this little part of the food poster. That will actually help drive up the ratings of the wooden poster as well. So it's a win win for both scenarios. In the meantime, while we're making money, we spend money. Let's keep tabs on our park. Make sure everything is on the right path. Guests are happy. Yeah, looks pretty happy. <laughs> it's an amusement park. It's hard not to be happy at a new park. Oh, Ferris wheel. Awesome. So you know what a Ferris wheel is? It's um, just a big circle. Standing Guests can ride on it, take some of gentle rides, it's fun. Although we're not gonna go right now because we have more fun stuff. Yeah, so uh, we have energy saving lights installed at our company, and sometimes things like that do happen. It's really annoying, honestly, but I just suppose it's something that could use. And we are out of cash again. Bummer. Yeah, so one mistake I made with the food poster, right here, 
because I didn't make the station longer. Because the longer you make the station, the more trains you can run. And the more trains you can run, the higher capacity it gets. So, you like see right here, this train is full and it's leaving, but the next train hasn't arrived back at the station yet. So we have this like line of people piling up. And the thing to remember is, when peeps are not buying stuff, they're losing money. And that's not good. So that was a major mistake that I made. And definitely should have made the station longer. But nothing I can do about it right now. So this bike just broke down, which demonstrates the need for handyman. I'm sorry, uh, mechanics. And at this point, we do want to hire a second one. Because when one is busy, you can't do anything else. So you definitely need more than one right now. And it's about to open, perfect. Let's go ahead and finish building our masterpiece. So one way you can get more money really fast is to take out a loan. This little thing right here, where this loan. But I don't really like doing that, partly because of the whole uh, interest thing they've got going on. So I just prefer to kind of wait it out. Because once this thing gets rolling, it's going to bring in some serious cash. So just gotta wait it out for just a few more minutes. It's a pain in the butt, but it's something we gotta do. Alright, just a few more cat pieces left. Come on. Do this. Be my buddy. We should increase the capacity of this line. Down an entrance, down an exit path. That ought to do it. And let's give it a test run. For that fill, let's see if we can increase the capacity just a little. My thousands of followers are clearly
Okay, so uh, that was Zuai, our multimedia editor. And we're almost done here. There we go. And a roller coaster is open. And as you can see right here, the assignment rating is massive. I love it. And it's going to be raking the profits since it has both the admission price and the on-ride photo, which is 250 by itself. And pretty much everyone buys that. So it's going to be a big breadwinner for us. Put down some benches so that guests have a place to sit down or they become you know, nauseous and stuff. And we do need to add one thing right here, and that is a no entry sign. So that, you know, guests, guests uh, don't get lost. Like Hiring one more hand again. What I generally like to do is just uh, keep one handyman open so that I can uh, just put him anywhere I want, anytime I want. Like say uh, someone threw up, like right there, I can pick up my handyman, move him to the spot, drop him, and he will take care of the rest. So let's see, um, what should I name this? Hmm. Because this one is called Your Mom. Let's call this one Booger Brain. Because I am 5 years old, and that sounds really funny. And let's give it a really, really, really horrible color. Like, uh, yellow green, and orange. Yeah, that's not terrible at all, right? It's really good. Awesome. Like this one. Pink. Uh, purple. And... Red. Green. I love it. Looks like my dreams. My green, pink. is like just totally blowing away our objective and hey look we have our first actual water ride the log ride right here water plume track supported by box section steel supports boats are propelled up slopes on rollers and are then free to travel along the water channel at the so if you've been to an amusement park you know what these rides are Basically, you sit down on a hollowed out log or plastic or whatever, and you float down a prop, and you go down a few drops, and you get wet, and you get fun. I see what you're doing. Right out of your eyes, through this The uh, thing to be careful about, the thing to be careful about with block blooms 
is, well, first of all, you don't go very high. Because, yeah, there's too high for supports. And the other thing, the other thing is, um, they move really slow. So, even if you have a lot of boats, you do want to keep the craft kind of short, so that more guests can uh, go on it and the line doesn't get, like, super long. Which is what I'm doing right here. And make the scary, and make the, uh, station platform as long as it goes. Honestly, this is on the longer side, or what a long thing should be. Because, I mean, I'm gonna test this out right now, and I'll show you, okay? See how slow they go? Look at this. Look at that. Traveling at 2 miles per hour. That is their default speed. And it is just ridiculously slow. Now, um, if I remember correctly, they did um, get them to move a little faster in the sequel, but we're not playing the sequel, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, rule of thumb when it comes to loft balloons, um, make the track short, make the station long, because you will need that capacity. Yeah, look at that. Uh, the last log has far left the station, and the first one isn't even back. And look how short this track is. Honestly, this is kind of unacceptable to me, and that's why I don't really throw log balloons all that often. Because the cost to uh, the off ratio is just not worth it at all. I forgot to open my bathroom, and I was getting kind of worried at uh, why people weren't going in. But now it's open, and <laughs> yeah, that that was very stupid on my part. So uh, yeah, most important tip: actually open your eyes. That kind of helps. Really helps, guys.
looks like we have one more roller coaster. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and build our Ferris wheel. Everyone loves Ferris wheels. These useless ornaments. Pop that right here. Here, yes, that's good. Just here. Here. Do our usual stuff and give it a custom. So if you look here, both of our mechanics are off, which means that we do need to hire a few more. So the lesson here is you've always got to keep growing your uh, staff along with your partner. Because otherwise things just don't turn out so good. Yeah, looks like we have a pretty decent part going on right now. Let's go ahead and give names to some of these. We have our roller coaster, we have Booger Brain, and we have your mom. We have Liquid Death, the Basement, Spinning Wheel of Doom, Ferris Fueler, and Barf O Matic. Oh, yeah, and this, which we should call Whiskey. Because, you know, it's like a whisk. Get it? A whisk? Whiskey? <laughs> I like puns, so don't see me. <sighs> so it's raining again, which means guests are not going on the road for this. And they're also not going on the lock for, for obvious reasons. Um, so now's a good time to just, you know, take stock of our situation. We have over 500 guests, which is more than double the amount we need by the end of the year. And we still have like a month, which is awesome. Um, let's look at our guests. Are they happy? Walking on the line. Thoughts is too crowded. Well, that's a good thing, right? Because it means our part is popular. But that also does impact uh, happiness quite a bit. And yeah, you can see here, I'm not going on whiskey while it's raining. I'm not going on liquid death while it's raining. I'm not going on your mom while it's raining. <laughs> I'm not going on your mom, sorry. I'll stop. I'm not going on your mom while it's raining. So, you know, um, rain sucks. It sucks. Because guests will not go on anything. And uh, some things you can do is um, give them umbrellas, uh, make more covered rides like merry-go-rounds, haunted houses, 
But in general, all you can do is just sit out, sit it out, and just bear it. Steel Road Mystery, okay. So this one is honestly one of my favorites because there, there's just like so many things you can do. And there's this the one layout you can build that is a massive, massive um, profit quarter. Like, you should look at some of the numbers this layout is insane. So the reason I'm going straight into a loop right now is because this ride has a certain um, operating design called launch roller coaster. And what that means is it doesn't need a lift node, it doesn't need a chain. You know, it can just like, go straight into the layout. And the way it does that is by launching itself out of the station. So I have this like little tower here at the end, so what that does is the roller coaster can launch, go through the layout, and then come back down and go through the walking loops. So it gets awesome ratings, it's really, really cheap to build, and it doesn't take up much space. And that is the perfect layout. Tower launch, launch speed set it at about 40-ish, and let's go ahead and give the test part. Okay, so I'm gonna knock off this one bit right here because the coaster doesn't need it. And we do get some of our money back, so that's a good thing. Test it again. And in the meantime, we can build our path layout. Yeah, so look at this. Uh, 5.6, which is a really high excitement rating. The roller coaster lasts for a couple of seconds max, so it has a very high capacity. It's cheap to build, and it's just awesome in every way. So let's go ahead and set our price. I think about 550 is ideal. And open it up. And name this your. Benches and cash cans. And. Yeah, let's go crazy. I like going crazy. Going crazy is fun! So much fun. Now that is a good looking skyline, right? We have this yellow and green one over here. We have this uh, purple and pink and red one. And then we have this orange and blue monstrosity right here. Yeah, it's, it, it looks great. It really does. I love this game so much. Alright, let's see what it does. check up on our objective, at least 250 guests. We have 515. So that is just blown out of the water right now, and honestly, 
even though this is like a tutorial page, I feel like it could have been made a little harder. Because if you look at all the other scenarios, um, the objective is much, much harder. And it's a lot longer too. So I get what they're trying to do by kind of like easing us into this whole thing. But I do wish sometimes that it was just a little bit um, more difficult. But that's just me. So, um, I think this ride, Booger Brain, if you look at its, um, budget, it's making a profit of over 10,000 per hour. That is insane. And that's due to a couple factors, really. Um, first of all, the excitement rating is through the roof, it's 6.4, which means I can charge very high for it. It has an on-ride photo, which means that guests will buy it at 250 a pop and it has three trains which means that there's always a train in the station which means there's always something for the peeps to board so you can get money that much faster let's look at your mom your mom is <laughs> um no the coaster i mean the coaster your mom, the coaster, is amazing. It has a pretty decent assignment rating. Um, it's making nearly 10,000 an hour, which is awesome. It doesn't have an online photo, but it's making all that through sheer popularity, which is great. It could have made even more if um, I had extended the station just a little to allow like one more train, because this line uh, shouldn't exist. It should like never be that long of a line. They should always like, have a train ready to go into. But that's the way I built it, and you gotta pay the price, I guess. Now, Liquid Death is making 4300 which is respectable, I guess, because, like I said before, the way the logs move on this ride, they move really slow, like so darn slow. It's just, I want to take the logs and just like push them along. And, uh, so that's why you guys took the shorter layout on these things. Because once we get really long, then, uh, they won't be returning to the station for a while, and guests get angry, and they, and they leave, and it's just a pain in the butt. So keep, uh, the distance short. And, uh, looks like we do need to assign some, some handymen right here. There we go. And go ahead and set one for this area too. And let's hire one more. About half a month left, which gives us time to build a few more things, really. I want to build one more of these, and have it like be an actual complete circuit this time. Uh, 
just barely. Now it is possible to go through the center of the loop, like right here. I'm not going to do it today because it's kind of hard and I'm not lined up properly for it right now. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting out of this right now as it is. back here and I'm just gonna pause the game for a sec to see how much time we have left um, right now I'm thinking that we can like of uh, course this like through here and kind of come back around I don't know we'll see how it goes and of course this Perfect. So I thought I'd have that little rut. Now let's head back. Awesome. Get some breaks, and we should be done. Almost done, just a few more seconds. 582, let's hurry up and get this open. Ah, just barely. I was literally like 10 seconds away from opening this right. Well, we can, just, we can still do it anyways. Now, the thing I like about this is all the guests are clapping. That's awesome. Look at that. Like those little feet. That's so cute. It's like, they're all clapping at me. Congratulations. They're like saying, hey, congratulations. You beat this first scenario. Good job. And uh, something that's even better about that is um, if I remember correctly, the length of time they applaud is directly related to how happy they are. So if they hate your part, they're only going to cheer for like a second. But then if they're like really happy with their part, then they will cheer for you a lot. So that's really cool. And uh, you know, in general, for a game that was built in 1999, it's pretty complex. 
I mean, you have roller coasters, you have themes, you have uh, thrill rides, you have uh, gentle rides and everything. And they run flawlessly. Not a single frame drops of anything. And uh, factor in all the scenery and the guests' AI and the way statistics work and the way uh, crowd control works. It's just really amazing that a game this good and this polished can be released in 1999. That's just amazing. So um, I paused the game again. Uh, just so I can speak without getting interrupted by the happy guests. Uh, so that's Forest Frontiers. As you can see, um, we did not get to a lot of the land. So even though this is one of the smallest scenarios we'll find, we only have one year through October year one to build it. So you don't actually end up getting to use a lot of this land, uh, which sucks, honestly. Um, you can keep playing. But, you know, it's just not the same, right? You need, you need a goal to work towards. Um, one more thing is that you can actually buy quite a bit of land. Like, all those little white squares, those are available to buy. Like, you can buy those. It is pretty expensive, and you will never need it in regular uh, scenario play. But, you know, if you want to build it out, if you want to go for, like, a huge mega theme park, you can. And that's awesome. Uh, but for now, we are going to enter our name, iDigitalTimes, we're going to save Forest Frontiers, and take one last look, we have the monster. Your mom, we have Booger Brain, and finally we have Horrible Pain, which I actually like how it turned out a lot. Just stay going through its paces. Okay, enough of that. Um, so that's sprint, that's a Forest Frontiers, everyone. A really great uh, first scenario to play. Kind of eases you into the game and everything. So this is Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I'm sure many of you have fond memories of this game. Uh, played it when you were young. Uh, possibly filled the death traps. You know what? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's go to death trap. We're not going to save it, but I just want to see what it is. <clears throat> Powered launch. Jack it up as high as, it, as high as it can go. 60 miles per hour. And don't test it. Just go. Someone ride this death trap of a coaster. I'm begging you, it's a lot of fun. So generally what happens is uh, people won't ride coasters that haven't been tested. Generally speaking. There's one, the poor bastard, he's gonna die. Let's see if there's one more so we can actually launch a damn thing. Yes, I know that, thank you. Come on. Yes! Haha! 
now. Let's uh, send these guys to their doom. Might have been a glitch. I'm gonna just test it out and see. Okay. That's new. That is honestly really new to me. I did not know that or there was a glitch like that. Huh. There we go. There's the crash we wanted to see. It's a shame there's no one on it, but hey, next time, right? <laughs> I swear, um, no matter how many times I play a game, I'll always get some sort of satisfaction from watching this. Okay, so, um, yeah. Forest Frontiers, everyone. We didn't get to kill anyone. So sad. Next time, I promise I will kill someone. But on a more serious note, don't save game, because I do not want that uh, crashing poster in this game file. Next time, we're going to go through Dynamite Dunes, the uh, next scenario, and a lot of fun itself as well. Alright? Alright. So, until then, thanks for watching. My name is Sung. I work for iVisual Times. Um, hopefully, if you're watching the uh, Twitch stream, you'll come back next week for more of the same. Until then, you can follow us on our website, iDigitalTimes.com. We are also active on Facebook and Twitter as iDigitalTimes. Just opened up an Instagram account as well, so go ahead and give us a follow if you like what you see. 